Don't even get me started on the Game Awards nominees, man. It just... <laughs> Listen, I know what the awards are, right? Like, it's a showcase, it's it's half advertising, it's half, like, you know, the MTV Kids' Choice Awards or whatever. I'm just saying, it just seems weird. It's not weird like there's anything untowards, but, like, the fact that God of War Ragnarok came out four days before the nominations and then was like, oh, of course it's going to be nominated for Game of the Year. How does it just, just doesn't make sense to me. Why does it matter how recently something came out? Well, this shit is like 40 plus hours long. So like the fact that uh, it just seems like people haven't had time to digest it. I know critics have had it longer, but like also it looks like it sucks. <laughs> Sorry. I'm joking in many ways. I'm just like, I apologize because I went off on this rant in a Super Auto Pets episode that won't come out for like 17 days. But this shit is like, I don't understand why, like, the only form of gaming that seems to be rewarded by the Game Awards is third-person action game. Where, like, oh, the combat engine is so good, the combat is so fun. You, that's 4% of the game. The rest of the game is riding around on a dog sled to Jotunheim with a head on your belt that goes, Kratos, this reminds me of the time me and my brother went to Nibelheim. And then people were like, I hate quips in Marvel movies. Quips ruin Star Wars. But oh, then when Kratos gets quipped, oh, I love it. And then Kratos, in, in, in a cutscene, motherfucker can jump 100 feet in the air to get on top of a mountain to fight God. But then he walks into a room and there's like a little lever. The lever is up a knee-high alcove. And he's like, what can I do? And you're like, I think I pick up the crystal and put it on a pedestal. And then I get like a ramp and then I... Kratos, have you considered picking up the... Have you seen the crystal over there? I I'm, I'm not just saying it's like immersion breaking. It just seems like it's putting on airs. Like, why not focus on the stuff that is more fun? Like, beating the crap out of people with the fluid combat system and the, the RPG elements and stuff like that and get rid of this stuff that's like, I can't unlock this door. Why don't you just have him fucking punch through the door and go kill some elves on the other side of it or something and just keep going? Anyway, sorry. I'm just, you know, I'm, it's it's just for fun. Like, the Game Awards, I don't need that. They're just for fun. But, like, they do seem... To, and admittedly, Elden Ring is uh, nominated, which is based, but also not unexpected. But I just don't understand why, like... <clears throat> Every, like, every time I hear about the Game Awards, I'm like, okay, which third-person action adventure game is going to win Game of the Year this year, right? Like, we, we need, like, more diverse awards shows. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Game Awards. Like, the Oscars are probably never going to give Mandy Best Picture. That's fair enough. But we need, like, another awards show that's like, here's, here's a, a different... People who are interested in different things get to vote on this awards show and it's because like even in the indie games category a lot of this stuff that was nominated there i'm not saying it's bad but it's like they're just the the seven premier like triple i indie games of the year and i'm like where the fuck is like vampire survivors 99 percent positive reviews on steam uh you know one million copies sold but oh because it only has like one mechanic in it that's done really well it's not as good as a game where you oh it not never mind it got nominated okay vote for vampire survivors <laughs> but if it wasn't nominated my point would stand imagine if it wasn't though <laughs> no i'm genuine i'm not mocking god of war well okay yes i am <laughs> But I'm doing so only because all this shit like reinforces the, the amount of like enhanced legitimacy that it gets from every media outlet creates an environment where like that is the platonic ideal for gaming. And if you're ever like, well, I actually think like Super Auto Pets is better than uh, God of War because God of War has too many mechanics for me to really get a feel for any of them. And uh, the game has like a seven hours of great story admittedly great story but it's it's gusseted by like a staggering amount of what feels like busy work put in to pad the length so that you feel justified in paying 60 bucks for it or whatever um people are like oh yeah but you prefer the emoji casino i'm like yeah i mean give give me like a one mechanic game done well any day of the week
I'm not saying like they should make a God of War auto battler. All I'm saying is I wish I could stop getting made fun of for not enjoying stories when it's not actually the story of God of War that makes me stay away from it. It's the fact that it, it, in order to get to the cutscenes, you've got to fight seven elves that are flying around while a thing quips on your belt. And then when you kill the elves, you get Alher plus three Alherian steel, plus seven gold, plus eight dwarven leather, plus nine upgrade crystals. And then I got to go, I'm looking through my fucking... A double entry ledger trying to figure out if I need more Heimdallian bronze to upgrade my belt to get plus one frost damage to get etc etc I'm like just the cutscenes that doesn't uh, the cutscenes don't bother me honestly it's the it's the maximalist design that that starts to feel to me to me like busy work I'm not trying to say God of War should not exist I'm just saying we should normalize like making fun of it <laughs> <laughs> I guess. You're literally talking about Elden Ring? No, in Elden Ring you just like walk through the forest and like fight everything that you see. Then every once in a while like some lady with an eye patch tries to talk to you and you're like mash 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 metonished mash mash and then uh mash mash mash. I guess what I'm trying to say is if if you're a god of war hater, there are dozens of us. When the first one came out, there were not dozens. There were like like two people, and I don't even know if I was one of them. But now there's dozens of us. Everything needs haters, by the way. It's helpful. Even I, I got my haters. They keep me grounded. I see you on the subreddit. When you when you find time to not be posting in like r slash hearthstone about how much you hate the game but can't stop playing it and putting your credit card information in. As a Breath of the Wild hater, I feel vindicated. See, listen, I've never played Breath of the Wild, nor God of War Ragnarok, but I have watched eight minutes of Apollo playing it, so I feel like I'm qualified to speak on it. <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 there's no sacred cows. I mean, even now people are like, using, they're saying like, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, what about the 25 separate somber stones? Yeah, well, dude, I would fucking love it if, when, every time I upgraded an Elden Ring weapon, I didn't have to go to the wiki and figure out, oh, this shit uses, like, divine smithing stones. I wish you just, like, killed enemies and it gave you, like, rocks. And you could use the rocks for anything. I don't need 25 different materials for upgrade trees. Just that, th these are rocks. If you bring the rocks to a blacksmith, you can upgrade anything. And I it, obviously I haven't thought about it from, like, a, a balance standpoint. You know, maybe better weapons need... Listen up, I'm getting myself into the weeds here, but still. I'm, I'm always a fan of more meaningfully minimalist mechanics in games. There's, there's literally only two types. I mean, that, listen, th here's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say why not one. All I'm going to say is the fewer you can have within reason, the better. I don't know if... It, it, I, maybe I'm just different from some other people. But um, there is a part of me where I'm like, has anyone ever played a game and been like, oh, the upgrade system was too elegant? <laughs> I didn't have to comb the wilds of the tutorial area to find seven U branches so that I could upgrade a belt that I got 45 hours into the game. Just, just plant a garden, Cicero. Like, life's hard enough as is. He's getting owned today. I feel like I'm holding my, my position well, honestly. I mean, if you like God of War, why aren't you playing it right now? Why are you talking to me? Shouldn't you be solving uh, a puzzle that gives you plus six Heimdallian bronze so that you can upgrade your leather belt at the at the quipping blacksmith so that you can do 6% more lightning damage against flying enemies? Notice, by the way, I'm not knocking at all the story of God of War because I, I don't want it to be a false uh, pretense where I'm like, oh, I don't appreciate emotions. It's quite the opposite. I respect what it's doing with the story. I just wish that it could be delivered in a different way that... You know, I mean, admittedly, I'm basically asking, can you make a less successful game? I'm not, I, I guess I'm not asking for them to change God of War. I'm not asking for them to make a different God of War. I'm asking for people to not get offended when you make fun of God of War. To not immediately get defensive as if, like, you know, they, uh, they can't handle it. You know, they immediately, it, it's the num, criticism dies. When as soon as something you like gets criticized, you go, oh yeah, well tell me what your favorite movie is so that I can insult it. It's, it's intellectually dishonest. I'll tell you my opinion in five years when it comes to PC. I mean, once it's on PC, all criticisms go out the window because if I can mod like Kratos to be Macho Man Randy Savage, I'll lift those damn crystals any day of the week.
Yeah, it's a good way to describe. I mean, I'm not trying to be too serious about it. Like, I could just ignore the fact that it exists as well, which I've been trying to, except that I get asked like 10 times a day if I'm going to play it, which is fine. I did play the first one, and I do have a Kratos emote. <laughs> is fair but uh i'm just i, I don't know i'm a, i guess i would say i i've realized that like the mainstream games media doesn't represent my interests which is fine you know they're there for like stuff for gen pop <laughs> not to be incredibly patronizing but like the games that will be rewarded in shows like that are very unlikely to be like my favorite games of the year like the games that I find the best game of the year, they usually uh, don't get nominated for anything. They're looked down upon because of their visuals. Even though amazingly Slay the Spire looks as good as it did in 2017 and all the shit that won like best visual effects in 2017 looks like it came out on a fucking Etch-a-Sketch now. Regardless, the best they could hope for is they might get nominated for best indie game of the year and then win some kind of award that, that they do like after a commercial break, they're like, it's time for the, the man wipes uh, awards that we didn't have time to show you. Uh, here's a most cool and innovative design goes to NL's favorite game of the year. Now, let's go back to best direction, best action adventure, best action, best RPG, and game of the year. It's the same seven games nominated for every single category, except we threw in like one little, boop, there's Stray. There's a little, maybe Stray, yeah, I know Elden Ring or God of War won every other category, but maybe Stray's gonna take game of the year, even though it lost seven times in the previous cat, listen. But that's, I, I, I gotta acknowledge, I've, I've gone through that with music a long time ago. Like, I don't, it, 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 it's, I've never labored under the delusion that, um, like, the thing that wins best album at the Grammys is gonna be my favorite album of the year. As soon as Wolf Parade's Apologies for the Queen Mary wasn't nominated, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't for me. Um, and then, like, the Oscars died for me when I became an adult who made my own movie-watching decisions, and I wasn't like, you know, no, dude, the one movie I saw that's nominated for Best Picture deserves to be the Best Picture. You know, I, I'm... You, I, sometimes I'm happy with the Oscars, sometimes I'm not. Parasite was pretty sick, there's no doubt about that. And it, you know, I guess it's the thing you gotta remember. Mainstream media awards, I guess they're kind of like, like the damn highway system, right? It's like if they were made just for you, it would be amazing. But because they've got to be useful for other people as well, you're like, ah, get out of my way. Why the fuck is this, uh, this, why is Lincoln nominated? Lincoln, did you see it? Did you keep your eyes open the whole time? Lincoln? But then you're like, ah, it's okay. At least Black Panther got nominated too. So I'm just farming minus twos. It's a good movie. It's like not really a good movie. No disrespect to Steven Spielberg. But then I've already told you I have a huge bias like against biographical films. Because I know how to read. <laughs> I, I have a little demon inside of my brain that is like, make them angrier. Make them even angrier. If I made a good movie, would you like it? It depends who you are. Like if you're Yorgos Lanthimos, the answer is like almost certainly yes. If your ass is like Tim Burton, no, but that shouldn't stop you from, like, you should, you know, go on your journey. Tenet wasn't great. No, it sucks. It's like, it's my favorite Chris Nolan movie. It's not very good. I love it, though. I think about it all the time still. It's been like four months since I watched it. Something, just something about it. Like, uh, like Daniel Craig in uh, Knives Out, you know? Beguiles me, compels me, though. What about Memento, though? No, nah, it's too grounded. <laughs> Nobody even, like, travels through time. It's just a guy with, like, you know, anterograde amnesia or whatever. You watch the new Cronenberg movie? Oh, you mean the one where uh, Viggo Mortenstern grows a new pancreas every day? I haven't seen it, but I've, I've read the Wikipedia article. I haven't seen it, but I have seen this summer house I bought, and it's magnificent. In a Super Mario 6, we're talking about a Super Mario 64 race. Dan, I know you're here. What's the, what are you making Squeaks do? Because he has to, doesn't he have to give you, and this is not meant to be insulting. Oh, oh, 16 star versus 70. That's, that's a, a, an elegant way to solve it. God of War could never. 
Please stop insulting God of War. Why? Oh, it can't take a little bit of criticism. She's got like a 94 on Metacritic. Some asshole is just like, it's not for me. People are like, my, my lady? Kratos, I will defend your honor. I get it. You can't, Listen, nobody can insult it right now. But in fucking six months, you guys are going to be watching this VOD. And you're going to be like, even if I don't agree with them, that shit was kind of funny. It's just right now. It's like, it's too close to home. I get it, okay? It's like when you guys were making fun of Wakanda forever, like the day before it came out. And I was like, I'm going to ban all your asses. In like six months, I'm going to be like, <laughs> let's... All right. I mean, come on. What were they thinking? What the suit looks like fucking... It looks like fucking ass. What a, you know, I haven't seen it yet. No one's watching this VOD six months from now? What, what are you talking about? There's at least going to be like one person out there watching this in like 2027. They're going to be like, I watch all... I've, I know it's weird. And by the way, this is fine. They've watched the... Uh, I've watched the Tiny Rogues playthrough every night before bed for four years. I mean, I'm the same way. Like, I've been listening to, like, the same four audiobooks before bed for, like, I don't know, since, like, 2017. And I, you'd think, like, haven't you listened to them all the way through? That's the thing. Because you listen to them when you're falling asleep, you don't remember anything. So it's like a new book every time. Yeah, one of them is, um... The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. You would think at this point, after using the audiobook to fall asleep for literally like seven years, I would know everything there is to know about the Second World War. But it, every time I listen, I, le I learn something new. Another one is Howard Zinn's A, A People's History of the United States. But to be honest, I've, I, that one... So there's here's the way, if you're listening to audiobooks, okay? Here's how it goes. The first several times you listen to them to fall asleep you're like oh i remember the start of this chapter so you just go to like a random chapter and then they're going to talk about you know like uh eugene debs or something like that and then you're like doo -doo 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 -doo. but then when you listen to them so much you'll get to a point where like you pick a random chapter and then you you have to scroll to get like 20 minutes into the chapter to have stuff you've never heard before. I'm now at the point where I'll be like waking up at like 3 a.m. with my earbuds still in and I'm like, I already heard this shit. I gotta get a new book. So that's how I got Barbara, Tuck's, Barbara Tuckman's A Distant Mirror. And I'll, it's, it's a history of the 14th century in Western Europe. And I gotta tell you, you could ask me anything about Western Europe in the 14th century. I could not answer a single question about it. Excuse me, did my own wife just hit me with a who asked? Who cares? What do you mean? Well, there's only two modes, okay? The shit that you said just made me mad and who cares? So we gotta oscillate between them. Nobody liked it when I was talking about shit everyone cared about. They were all like, what? I disagree with him. Now I'm talking about shit you find boring and you're like, talk about something else. I got nothing, man. Just say things I agree with. I told you, I listen to Howard's Inn. Well, it's actually his brother that does the voice work, but uh, he, he wrote the words. I've been listening to the audiobook of Mark Z. Danieluski's House of Leaves. <laughs> I can't even imagine. That is a, the, an insanely good bit for like a sketch comedy show that doesn't exist because it would have no audience. That shit like, sounds like something Jonah Hill would say in Superbad. You talk, you're not making sense right now, Evan. You sound like the audiobook for the house of leaves like what the fuck are you even saying you could probably make it work on comedy bang bang that's probably true bro i i've actually forgot that i watched justin do tier lists a while ago i am happy that justin and i are the only two sane people on the planet who recognize that forrest gump is ass everybody else has been brainwashed to think that if tom hanks is in a movie it must be good that's a cold take. I'm glad to hear it, because, like, I mean, in many ways, Forrest Gump is kind of like the god of war of movies. Forrest Gump is overhated. That might be true, but I think it might be overhated just because it's so unbelievably, like, overloved, in my opinion. Okay, I'm into this. Like, if you were to ask people on the street, hey, what's your favorite movie? If you asked a thousand people, how many people do you think would say Forrest Gump? I mean, keep in mind, there's like 50,000 movies out. I would, I would say, on a, I bet 2% of America's population has Forrest Gump as their favorite movie, which is a super high number. 
99.9% of movies ever released would have zero representation on that list. I think I think you would get 2% of people that say Forrest Gump. Now, I also think you would get 7% that say Spider-Man No Way Home. So I'm not trying to insult anybody's tastes. I'm just saying Forrest Gump definitely better than Spider-Man No Way Home. That's not the question I'm asking, okay? I'm just saying that obviously, like, part of the reason that Forrest Gump gets so much hate is that it gets so much love, even though it sucks. I just don't believe that this motherfucker was at all those historical events. Like, Forrest Gump is like Benjamin Button for American history for me. It's just like, I can't suspend my disbelief. I, I can't believe that Benjamin Button is aging backwards and is giving Kate Blanchett a kiss on the lips when he's an 80-year-old preteen. And I, I, I simply don't believe that, you know, Forrest Gump could do all this stuff. I don't believe that he could run across the United States of America, fight in the Vietnam War. Uh, be an early investor in Apple. Start the Bubba Gump Shrimp Corporation. Like it's just, it's just too much, man. I also love good stuff. Like you may, you may go back in the old Twitter archives. When Parasite was getting a bunch of attention, Kate and I saw Parasite. I did not say, "Whoa, why is everyone talking about this shitty movie?" I think I tweeted, "Whoa, Parasite! What a great movie!" I didn't know, hey, I sure hope this isn't the last time I'm in a movie theater for three years due to a combination of, uh, you know, a completely unforeseeable global pandemic plus uh, then having a baby. I don't understand Parasite. Like, why didn't the family just buy a house? <laughs> okay, listen. That's plus two, plus two. Especially, I mean, back then, interest rates, come on. Okay, they, uh, who asked, who asked? Okay, a flood of who asked in the chat. So true, so true. My mistake. You just buy all this. You don't need to read it. That's the thing. See, this is like, to me, this is God of War. It's like, why they got all this stuff here? There should just be like two things. Just be like, you know, one of those keys and bombs. That's it. Or maybe better yet, just get rid of it. I think that when you start the game, they should just paint something on the ground that's like WASD to move, keys open doors, bombs blow up rocks. I think I know what that game's called. Is that the Binding of Isaac? Well, well, well. <laughs> Who would have known? She, she, does she know? Yes, she knows. Please is disingenuous to like in every mechanic you don't like to God of War. Hey, your comment is some serious uh, God of War Ragnarok vibes going, going off of it right now. Just so you know, just thought you'd like to know your comment reminds me a lot of God of War Ragnarok and like not the story, but like the way that the story is diluted by like a bunch of busy work so that it can justify his price tag. Like I'm sure there's a good game in there somewhere, but they, in order to appease the shareholders of the Sony Corporation, it needs to appeal to as wide an audience as possible. And the number one thing that stops people from purchasing a game is its length, even though that isn't actually correlated with their overall enjoyment. I'm not trying to make an enemy of the God of War creators. I'm simply asking questions in a Petersonian sense. I'm, yes, I'm merely trying to antagonize the fans, but no God of War fans should be here right now. They should be taking attempt number eight on a Valkyrie on Give It To Me Daddy difficulty and watching like another streamer or YouTuber like top 10 Kratos builds to kill Valkyrie on, Valkyries on Give It To Me Daddy difficulty. You being kind of a dick about it though? I'm not being a dick. You know who was a dick? It was freaking Loki, dude. Not like in the movie. Well, in the movies, he's kind of mischievous, but in the in the game, he was like, oh, freaking give me your son or whatever. I forget your, your son is like a key to open a mountain or something like that. I can't remember. It's something I was trying to clip through every single cutscene. But I was like, dude, come on. That's my boy. Adam Sandler, Andy Samberg, James Caan. And you're, try you're out here trying to like beat me up or whatever. Balder? What the hell? You see there's a personal attack on my... On my physical appearance, that's against the TOS. The kid is Loki? No, the kid is Atreus! I remember that. Atreus! I remember that. No! Oh, this man wouldn't land a single parry in God of War Ragnarok? Listen. There are streamers who can't figure out how to open a Roth IRA that are playing that game on its hardest difficulty level, okay? I think I can muster the strength to give it a try. No need to take shots. Jay, I've been taking shots all day! You aren't even American? Yeah, but I'm like, I know a little bit about the world. I'm not drunk, I just have to like go pee a little bit. <laughs> I have had to for like two hours.